This video is sponsored by Bleast Bath. Please consider subscribing as it takes hours to make these videos. I hope you enjoy the show. Mac Mini M1 for developers. In my opinion, this is the best budget friendly entry level programming device out there. Whether you're getting into web development, mobile development, data science, or even looking to save money by running a startup, you're getting a Unix based system that will allow you to start diving deeper into the world of software and get developing quicker. So people of the internet, I'm here to review the M1 Mac Mini to simply provide its hardware capabilities and give an overall overview of how it behaves when writing code. The thing to understand is that M1 is not a CPU. M1 is a well condensed silicon package that contains the CPU, GPU, RAM, and much more. But the coolest part is that with the help of the unified memory architecture, the same memory is allocated to the GPU and CPU, meaning that M1 can quickly serve large sets of data. And now that it's integrated into the Mac mini, well, you get that eight CPU core with four performance cores and four efficiency cores, an eight core GPU already embedded into the base model, eight gigabytes of unified memory, configurable up to 16 gigs, and the ability to store up to two terabytes of data with a base model starting at 256 gigs but with the mac mini we get so much more than the base model macbook air has to offer for starters you can simultaneously support up to two displays which does include at most one display with up to 6k resolution at 60 hertz connected via one of the two thunderbolt ports and one display with up to 4k resolution at 60 hertz connected via hdmi these ports will be found in the back along with a couple of usb a ports a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and ethernet port configurable up to 10 gigabit ethernet in case you want to plug this machine to your own little network it does have bluetooth 5.0 which has been behaving great when connecting my mx master 3 the logitech mx keys and also my logitech zone wireless bluetooth headsets besides this is a pretty small machine with 3.6 centimeters in terms of height and 19.7 centimeters in width and depth it weighs around 1.2 kilograms, which altogether makes it great if you are working in tight spaces and have the need to hide it. But I do have to say, if you pair it up with a Satechi dock, you elevate and add ports to your Mac Mini. Using just a single USB Type-C connection, you get to add a USB Type-C data port, three USB Type-A ports, a 3.5 millimeter headphone audio jack, and a set of SD card readers to your device. On paper, the tech specs are great, but the biggest question here is, should you combine your M1 Mac Mini with 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM? Well, the more apps you run simultaneously, the more RAM you'll need. With multiple Chrome tabs open, a few IDs on the side, a terminal process, and even a low-code studio platform such as BlazePath, things were looking great with 8 gigabytes. Under BlazePath Local Studio, you can build your application with a distributed microservices architecture easy and fast. They deliver all the tools to allow you to get an app up and running extremely quickly and turn it into a big enterprise grade project. Along with the Mac Mini, it is ideal for startups with big plans to grow their MVP into big apps and for you to save money and development time. 
While testing memory efficiency for this review, I used the studio to quickly design a MySQL database, generate all my CRUD functions for the API running under a microservice, and even quickly develop the mobile and web frontend for my app. With multiple Chrome tabs of Blaze Path documentation open and the studio running my hyper-productive environment in terms of gigs, it was performing super well even under the Rosetta translator. Under Blaze Path, you can get the job done 10 times faster, specifically with big applications. And the best part is that they have no vendor lock-ins and there will never be. It produces human readable code. Therefore, you can deploy your application anywhere you want and there's nothing that keeps your project captive in the platform. You can try Blaze Path for free with a link down in the description and create your free account to download your local studio where you will also get additional cloud credits to deploy your application using the link below. But along Blaze Path, there's still so much more to explore on the M1. For starters, we have native support of Homebrew. It is super easy to install, just make sure Homebrew bin is in your path because it delivers the things you need that Apple or Linux don't, such as ThemeKit to develop Shopify e-commerce websites. You can now obviously use VS Code natively to do such things, but if you are more interested in a modern web dev approach, Node and NPM, Git, and even Docker are now fully M1 supported. In fact, I went out of my way by containerizing a small Node.js app and test the build time with an M1. With the time parameter added within the terminal command, I obtained a total of 17 seconds to build this image. And to top it all off, Apple Silicon now supports JetBrains IDEs, which means that if you are a PyCharm lover, you're now in luck. In fact, Python is set to run better on M1. With the help of a YouTuber called Alexander Siskind, I was able to perform the Mandelbrot test to validate this statement. By running the Mandelbrot algorithm with Python, it will keep our M1 CPU super busy by generating the fraction set and we can compare how long this would take and so I pasted the code into PyCharm and I ran the time command within the terminal to run my process. With a total time of 1 minute and 5 seconds and a max temperature of 79 degrees, this performed quite well compared to my $1000 CPU which reached temperatures of 62 degrees while running the Mandelbrot algorithm with Python. During my web development phase, whether I was coding my new Shopify canvas store or creating an e-commerce web app with React, everything was very snappy. Even when I needed to tweak some Adobe XD files running under Rosetta and I had Spotify running, listening to some Joe Rogan. The new architecture prioritizes processes and allocates the right amount of RAM to them. However, application or software developers who need to run virtual machines graphics, and emulators to compile massive projects will definitely want to check the 16GB version. I quickly tested Parallels which now has a native M1 app to see how it would behave by running Windows 10 client. And with 8GB of RAM and a bunch of windows open on macOS, it was laggy. So I wouldn't take this RAM bet when it comes to long term usability because running other things at the same time will slow things down. Similarly to web development, mobile dev was excellent for native programming. Not only I was running multiple processes while I was writing code on Swift and Xcode, but I was also interacting with my MongoDB database and creating an API in Node for my app. The build times within the emulator took about 34 seconds from a fresh start and because I am able to easily connect my phone to the Mac Mini, I was able to easily deploy this into my phone. I never experienced any sort of crashes with an M1 and even with 8GB of RAM, things were snappy. But when diving into Android Studio, you run into some issues Issues, including the fact you'll need a physical device for testing, although I was able to create a virtual device with a new ARM64 system image, but you have to make sure you have the Canary channel to get the latest studio builds. So I launched it and decided to test it by running a few videos and games on it. To my surprise, it was extremely fast when playing games, but was affecting the RAM usage a bit too much for my liking. Although things were still behaving well within my whole setup, but I wanted to test more. So I decided to download Flutter, install it with my M1 machine and run a sample tracker app with the emulator. And no, Flutter is not natively supported on M1 yet, but is set to run on Rosetta extremely well. And this clearly showed when running this tracker using our ARM supported emulator. Since Android Studio is powered by IntelliJ, they have a pretty similar user experience where indexing is pretty fast, building a medium sized Java project didn't take too long, but I did notice some rare slowdowns when dealing with IntelliSense. As for data 
science processes, things seem to run smooth. I'm not into data science, but I can show you a few things that will allow you to explore your M1 decision further. The matter of the fact is that M1 with Excel spreadsheets now runs natively, and it did not seem to struggle at all when sorting 1 million rows. Summing them all did not seem to bother M1, and the user experience was still great when dealing with such large data set. I also went ahead and installed Anaconda, which is recommended for a data science environment. Therefore, I created a Python environment, activated it, and installed a few packages within this virtual environment. Running these packages on Jupyter Notebook did not seem to struggle, and even when developing in R, which now runs natively on M1, I used the R Studio to do a performance test to join numbers from 1 to 100,000 to see how long it would take, and it took a minute and 24 seconds. But again, I'm not a data scientist, so take these tests with a grain of salt. Although I do recommend you guys check out Luke's Barus's channel if you want extremely in-depth information. In a nutshell, the M1 Mac Mini makes a great developer's computer, but if you are gearing towards doing intensive memory tasks, you might want to get the 16GB of RAM. Else, if you think that none of these M1 workflows seem ready for your development needs, I would simply go with an Intel-based MacBook. If you guys enjoy these types of reviews, let me know with a hashtag M1. I have an M1 MacBook accessories video for you guys next week. Take care, and people of the internet, I will see you all soon. I feel like maybe the channel sometimes deserves bloopers. You know why? Because I woke up this morning and I had lost electricity. And I had a lot of footage left, but now finally we're done. Pretty freaking happy. Thank God. But let me show you guys. You guys see that? That, my friends, is a generator. And I pretty much took a whole cable, a whole extension all the way down, and connected the PC and the other Mac Mini with a monitor. So it's currently running on that thing and the generator. And on top of that, my Wi-Fi is pretty much my phone plan. Genius. I hope you guys enjoyed the video.